Good evening. It is lovely to be with you this evening as we continue to gather together for this lengthened series of praying with the Psalms. And tonight we will be reflecting and reading on Psalm 70. And we would encourage you to have a Bible to look at and whether that is a, a paper version or if you use an app on whatever device that suits you. Another option is to tap on the link to Bible Gateway, which you can find along with this video. And this will take you directly to tonight's psalm, which is from the NIV UK version. Being able to read from the Bible is a good practice to develop and it de provides nourishment for our lives. So to help us settle into this time together, the candle here will be lit and if you have one at home, please light it at the same time. And so let's begin. We light this candle to see the flame that arises from the dark wick, giving light, giving warmth, and a reassurance through the Holy Spirit of the presence of Jesus in our homes, and that the light that breaks through the darkness will give us peace and hope in our lives. And we will continue to be aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit by encouraging a sense of stillness within ourselves, by relaxing our shoulders. Gather your scattered thoughts into one and picture yourself laying them down at the feet of Jesus. Lift up your head and focus on the face of Jesus. And as you're breathing slowly in and out, just picture Jesus during this moment of silence. Holy Spirit, come into our homes and be aware as you settle into our hearts, into our minds, with the gentle yet deep love of Jesus. Let us be open to what Jesus wants to say to each of us tonight. Heavenly Father, I welcome you here in my home, in my life, in my heart. And so hand over anything I know that is not pleasing to you and so can then fully return to you and have a clearer vision of what you desire for my life and how I can be a blessing to others, which will be a witness to your love and grace. Amen. And the psalm today, short as it is, is about crying out for help. From a baby onwards, we all have needed and will need help in our lifetimes for all manner of things. Help me carry this. Can you find something that I have lost? Can you help me with that? How many times in our lives have we asked, can you help me? There are also times of crisis and upheaval, which can be short term or seemingly never ending. We can feel let down, burdened down with responsibilities, suffering with an illness, stressed out in work, uncertain future, financial worries, someone making life difficult for you, and more. One of the, the well-known Beatles song is Help, help, I need someone. Help me if you can, I'm feeling down, and I do appreciate you being round. Help me get my feet back on the ground. Won't you please, please help me? As I said, there is nothing new under the sun. David wrote songs with the same sentiments long before John Lennon. And it isn't clear in the Beatles song as to who is John Lennon crying out to. This particular psalm we are covering tonight, short though it is, is a desperate cry from David to God for help. And it seems in it as if God is panicking. He is in such fear for his life and he is pleading with God to be delivered from the awful things that are happening to him and that this deliverance should happen immediately. And this psalm is, is like a sandwich. 
The first verse and the last one are the call to God to come quickly. Don't delay, be here and be my rescuer. The second and third verses have David crying out to God to deal with those who are making his life such a misery. There are people who have turned against him, are gloating over him, and who he feels are controlling his life and worse, are trying to kill him. Is David demanding that God should punish these people by taking their lives because they are determined to end his life? And no, he isn't. He is asking that God should deal with them by confusing them, disturb their plans to come against them. And David also asked that his enemies should come to a realisation that they ought to be ashamed about what they are doing. He also asked that they will be disgraced, meaning that they will lose God's grace because their actions are displeasing to God. And in verse 4, David turns to those who are endeavouring to look to God for direction in their lives and so consequently can experience joy and gladness. They are looking to God for his help, not trying to do it themselves. They are looking for godly guidance for what is the best course of action. And the psalm is a lesson as to how and why to pray for those people who are troubling us. There are people who seek to do harm and disturb lives and there are those who seek God and desire to serve him and worship him. The former, if they continue on their path of destruction, will only experience distress which will have no end. God is the judge. He alone will carry out the justice and mete out the punishment. He is all-knowing, is righteous and is just. He is also a God of love and mercy because he does not want people to carry the burden of being the judge and deciding on the punishment. It is a weighty responsibility and he does not want people to be weighed down and crushed by desiring to make such decisions. The latter who actively seek God will experience hope, joy and salvation. He is our rescuer and deliverer. And there are times, just like David describes in the psalm, when we feel that his rescue mission is too slow and we need to feel that God is absent and is not listening. Interestingly, in one of the Tear Fund daily Lenten messages, Pete Gregg from 24-7 says, we want God to airlift us out of the trouble that we are experiencing. But in fact, God has already parachuted down and is with us in the muck and chaos of our situation. God is here. His spirit is with us. So let us read the psalm. And as we do, hold on to the thought that God has come down. He is among us. And we will pause for silence at the end of the psalm before we pray together. So Psalm 70. Hasten, O God, to save me. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May those who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. They, may those who say to me, ha ha, ha ha, turn back because of their shame. And may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say, the Lord is great. For as for me, I am poor and needy. Come quickly to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. Lord, do not delay. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, that you have come down to be among us. 
you are God who cares for and loves us. You are our saviour and rescuer, and we have so much to thank you for. Forgive us that at times we struggle to give thanks, perhaps when we are so overwhelmed by the state of the world or by the difficulties we are going through, or maybe because life is going well and we take your provision for granted. Help us to be a people who give thanks every day and may be willing to learn and practice praising you, remembering what you have done for us and will do for us remembering that you are ever near. Lord, we give thanks for all the work that has gone into organising for people to have the vaccine, the gathering of all the information required, the extra people needed to give the injection, and the logistics of getting the vaccine delivered to GP surgeries, to the vaccination centres, and also to those in the community who need to go to people's homes. May they not be pressed down by the numbers of people who need the vaccination and then have to return for a further one. Give them energy when they are tired, endurance to finish the task, and protect them from unkind and thoughtless words which are spoken over them. We pray for our own government and all governments around the world who have so many decisions to make. We pray that all that they do is in the interests of the people who they have sworn to look after and care for. May they not be oblivious to you, God, and have an awareness of your presence, even accepting that you do exist, and come to a realisation that they do have someone who they need to answer to. May you confound those who focus on building up their own kingdom and have little regard or interest or anyone else. We pray for those who feel that they are beyond God's reach. May they know that you are always reachable, that no one is too far gone and beyond help. We pray even at this moment, if anyone is contemplating taking their own lives, that you will rescue them from the pit of despair and the Holy Spirit will give them a reassuring touch that there are better days ahead in their lives. Let your light shine in the darkness. Amen. And we continue to pray together using the Caleb prayer which is on the screen. O high King of heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church and send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And thank you for joining us tonight, and we look forward to being with you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. And please, when the opportunity arises, share with someone that these evenings of praying with the Psalms are available to them. And so, a final prayer for you. Circle us, Father God. Keep love within and hatred without. Keep hope within and despair without. Keep peace within and anxiety without. Surround us with your love. Surround us with your protection. Surround us with your peace. Amen. <laughs>